This is That Video Game Podcast, episode 643 for February 17th, 2020, medium rare item. With a side of the loot boxes. Two all beef patty special sauce, lettuce, cheese, pickles, onions on a sesame seed bun. Welcome back to another episode of That Video Game Podcast. I'm your host, Boston Jeremy, as always, is Moonpeer. Hello. And the Nymph. Still alive and kicking. <laughs> so, oh, against all odds. <laughs> still still here. Um, Patreon.com slash E1M on the ones are numbers. Check out all the early access behind the scenes. Uncensored. Cool stuff. Uh, out right now, a brand new episode of uh, TVGP Game Club. Uh, we just recapped our thoughts in, I think, our longest episode of the show uh, at around, it was like an hour, an hour and a minute uh, for This is the Police 2. Uh, we talked, we we got deep into uh, some, some real conversations about This is the Police 2. Um, so if you've, if you played that along with us, uh, go listen to that. If you haven't, Go play This is the Police 1, then 2, <laughs> then go, then go nope. listen to us go play uh, for, yeah, uh, at the very least play This is the Police 1 because it's it's stupid good. It's really, God, it's so good. Anyway, so that's live right now. Uh, let's get into it. Uh, Moonpeer, what have you been playing this past week? Uh, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Normally we start with that joke, except, except this, this week. Except this of life. It's actually true. Um, yeah. Because this week I pretty much spent all of my week. I mean, don't get me wrong. I played a little bit of Apex Legends. Not enough to really talk sure. about, but I played a little bit of Apex. I played a little bit of Dead by Daylight, but I wasn't on for Dead by Friday, so I didn't even take part in that. The only other right. two games I really had time to play this week was Solitarica for We Rogue Like right. It. Go check out We Rogue Like It, folks. Yep. Um, and I put probably about 25 hours into This is the Police 2, trying to get that beat in time for Game Club. <laughs> Up so, until yeah. literally the last minute before the show. <laughs> yes, I literally hit credits, like, and then had to run and make myself a cup of coffee so I could come up and do the show. Like, it was yeah. that close. Yep. Um, so when, normally that joke is kind of, haha, that's funny, he, 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 he didn't play right. anything, and then I suddenly drop like 50 games that I've been playing. <laughs> right. This time I'm serious, that's all I've been playing. Nymph, tell us all about your games. Yep. All right. <clears throat> of course, I have to cough right then and there. Oh, you, um, I'm, yeah. I'm not ready, I'm not ready. <laughs> <laughs> yep. It's too soon, too soon. Right. <laughs> um, so I played a couple more games than none, but I've been pretty much running straight with Adelaide Riza. Mm-hmm. Um, that thing sunk its hooks into me pretty strong this week. <laughs> you I and had... uh, Monkey Senior uh, both I are like, oh, I'm playing, oh, this is all I'm playing. <laughs> it's a great game, and I almost swore there because I'm s- apparently just not awake. Anyway. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, it's just that good. <laughs> yeah. I am up against the final boss now. Oh. Wow. Um, I'm not going to spoil anything, but... I kind of figured this was going to go the normal JRPG route of I haven't died yet and nothing's really been terribly challenging. Mm -hmm. This final boss will probably be the Mount Everest curve of difficulty (laughs) spikes. Right. (laughs) And it was. Uh Um, I saved before I went in there because I figured this was going to suck. Yeah. Um, Went to go fight the thing. I go from doing about 15 to 20 damage, which is normal so far to doing one point of damage on everything. (laughs) That's the good stuff. And this thing is doing 60 points of damage to everybody at once, multiple times. Oh no. And I have never had anything do more than maybe 15 points of damage to me. (laughs) Oh boy. Yeah. So, and it's got like 5,000 some odd health, which is the highest I've ever seen anything have health. (laughs) So I was like, yeah, and, no, this is this is not going to work. <laughs> and just to be clear, it's not the secret boss, right? It's not. No, this this is just the right. end story boss. Yeah. Oh man, how how many so, hours are you in so far? Thirty something. That's not bad. No, um, 
But what I'm finding out is that because it is more of a crafting game than it is a standard JRPG, 90% of your stats are reliant on what you craft for your characters. Right. And like 10% is your levels that kind of matters. It's The levels so far are pretty much just there so that your characters learn new abilities. Mm. Um, which you get a lot of abilities just completing the personal character quests. Like, hey, you know, win 15 battles or, you know, whatever. And then you unlock Vitality 1 or, you know, fun stuff right. like that. Yeah. So I have to do a lot of gear grinding. A lot of my gear that I have for my characters are like what I would consider to be like third tier. They're like three tiers higher than what the starting gear was mm-hmm. for uh, at the beginning of the game. And I hadn't really messed with it just because I was able to either stunlock the enemies or, you know, they just, I had ways around the game that way. It just wasn't an issue for me. Right. Until I hit the final boss. And now the final boss is like, no, you need to do this game correctly or else you will go no further. Right. Your threadbare shirt is no longer cutting it for armor. Yeah, exactly. So I just looked online just to see what everyone had to say about the boss. Um, and it was a lot of the same, shock and awe that every other jrpg has of a lot what of is with this difficulty yeah what is with this difficulty spike on this boss right what did i do yeah and a lot of people were just saying it's like you just have to and for like the hardcore people are like you just have to get 99 was it 999 quality items oh sure duplicate yeah and duplicate them oh yeah they're like yeah I, I, when i beat the game my alchemy level was at like 78 and blah 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 i'm at like 42 right now <laughs> i thought you were gonna say three you're like i'm at three no. like i'm I don't even know no, how to there, read. There's a lot of stuff that you do have to build story wise. Like the story forces you to build things before you can continue on, which is fine. Right. But no, I am nowhere ready for this boss. So <laughs> there's but, a lot of grinding that I have to do for it. That's the kind of exciting though, because yeah. yeah, and I think that's kind of exciting though, because there's still so much more that you can see. Because uh, for most of us when we finish a jrpg it's like yeah i could go back and do that other stuff or here's the 30 other jrpgs i have to get started yeah. so it's oh. cool that you get to see so much more stuff before you you finish it well and so now i have unlocked a lot of things in this game which are pretty awesome i have a basically a station where i can duplicate an item it's okay. stats and everything. So I don't have to constantly find the materials to rebuild this item. I just have to use what's called gems. Oh, okay. And what the thing with gems is, or any item that you create, you can break down into these gems. And you can use them for a whole bunch of things. But with this duplicator, let's say you need to make, like, iron. Mm-hmm. So you've made your quality 999 iron, and you put it in this duplicator, and it tells you, okay, it's going to cost you 60,000 gems to duplicate this three times. Mm-hmm. It's like, all right, so you give it your 60,000 gems, and now you have three more of that same item, same gotcha. quality and all that. So you're not sitting there uh, trying to find all this high-end quality ingredients to make this one item again. Gotcha. Let me ask you guys another question. What did you think about item worlds in Disgaea? Uh, I fantastic. Loved, I love them, and I hated them. I yeah. love them so, because it was like a chance to go in and like grind out XP at an appropriately tiered level. Um, uh-huh. and I hated them because I was like, now I feel like I have to get to the bottom floor in every single one of them. <laughs> and there's yes. infinite numbers. Mm-hmm. So they have a light version of item worlds in this game. Uh oh. It's basically what you are doing is you are throwing materials into this item and it will create a world. And it's so far they've been tiny. I don't know how big they can get, but it's been fairly tiny. Mm -hmm. Um, But basically you do this so that way that you create a world that has the potential for you to grab hard to find crafting materials and to be able Uh. to fight enemies that may or may not drop those as well. Okay. The cool thing about it is that it has an old school password thing that you can share with your friends. So let's say... I make something really cool that gives me really rare items. I write down the six-digit password, and I can pass Uh that on to Monkey Senior. Monkey Senior can put that into his game. Right, you're passing your seeds around. Yep. Right. So that's – I haven't been able to mess with it a whole lot because I didn't dig into it a lot. But you can – when you first get it, you can only make one world at a time. Mm -hmm. But then as you explore the game more, you find these extra – let's just call them like pods, which basically holds that world – 
so you can I can now make two different worlds. Oh, okay. And they only have a certain amount of times that you can go into them and, you know, hunt down your resources and whatever before they go bad. And then you just make a new one. Mm-hmm. But if you hang on to that passcode, you can redevelop into that same one. So you're not really missing out on anything. Okay. That's cool. But, but yeah, so they there's a lot of cool stuff that they've added to this game. And yeah. I, yeah, I'm still loving it. I dug into the menus a lot more because I was complaining about how I could never find the items that I need because I just pick up everything. Mm-hmm. If I had taken two seconds to look in the freaking menu, <laughs> there's a whole thing that tells you, hey, this is medicine grass. This is where you can find it. And it shows you a picture of the landscape and it tells you what the <laughs> landscape is. And every- I mean, the game is nothing but helpful if you apparently take more than two minutes to look at the menu. Right. <laughs> so- <laughs> I I would say right now, if you are looking into getting into one of these games and you've been worried about, like, the time limit Mm -hmm. kind of stuff, you know, the older version of these games that they had or anything else, this would be a good jumping on point. It's real streamlined. It's real user-friendly. The story's okay. It's nothing to write home about. I've heard that as kind of the criticism about all these games. It's like the the first couple of the Atelier games were always like, the story's not great, the crafting's fun, the time limit is kind of cool, but like, you know, they're fine. And as they've lifted the time restriction stuff, it's sort of like, yeah, the story's still not great, but boy, it's fun to make stuff. Yeah, you're you're basically going there because you've thought, I really like the crafting system in this game. I mm-hmm. wish there was a game about crafting. Well, here's your game right here. Right. And it's really fun. So yeah. I would highly suggest anyone who's been interested. And it's short for a JRPG. It's around 40 hours. Mm-hmm. I'm apparently going to test that to see how long this grind's <laughs> going to take to beat the final boss. Right. But everyone has said it's usually around 40-ish hours, which is really short for a JRPG. So yeah. it's not a bad one to start with. Yeah. The next game that I had been playing was Code Vein. Ah, yes. I am in the dried up trenches, Mm -hmm. which was the place the last time I talked about this game where I couldn't find out where I needed to go. And then I found it and stopped playing. This is it. It's still a fun game. I've been knocked off into a trench twice now and died. So I've had to run back and grab my souls. It's still some fun. I don't have any issues with the game. It's yeah. just kind of a pain sometimes, just like any other Dark Souls type game. Yeah, it's anime on... Dark Souls, like yeah. exactly what it looked like it was going to be. You feel like you're on top of the world, you get a little too greedy, and the game beats you back down into submission <laughs> and reminds you that, no, you need to take this seriously. <laughs> yeah, oh, like Dark Souls. Yeah. yeah. And this was mostly because I didn't – there was a lot of verticality in this particular area that i haven't Mm. really experienced beforehand so there's a lot of things just jumping down at you ah right which i mean yeah it happened before but not as much as it's been happening here Mm. and there's a lot of enemies that climb up over the edge to come and get you too which you're used to yeah Yeah, it's it's not that bad (laughs) usually you can knock them back off before they even get up so kick those skeletons right in the face exactly (laughs) so it's usually not an issue but it's just there's a lot of oh, you think there's one enemy here? And you're like, no, there's now five. So yeah. <laughs> that kind of dumb stuff. Uh, the next game that I played is The Division 2. I was fairly sure no one else had been playing this this week. <laughs> I didn't get too terribly far into it. I picked it up because it was $2 or what, $3 it's on $3. Xbox? Yeah if, uh, yeah, if anyone wants to play it <laughs> on uh, PC, PS4, and Xbox One for the next week, it's $3. Yep. Yeah. So uh, my wife gifted it to one of her friends. I gifted yep. it to one of um, one of her friends, uh, yep. which resulted in the whole shower bitmoji thing which if you saw on my my (laughs) twitter feed this week yeah that was a embarrassment um but yeah it seems like this is the time to pick it up and then i realized that why they've done this is because the warlord of new york is season two it's their new year of content yep yeah so i am level eight i've cleared out the first area i got the east washington area that yeah like your first map area yeah so now i'm going into like a smaller area after that um the whole reason i was real hesitant about picking up the second game was because in the first game 
you, there it seemed like you were punished a lot for playing the game solo like a lot of those missions yeah. were not meant for you a lot of that game was not meant for you to play by yourself yep which considering that i work australian hours apparently that doesn't give me time <laughs> to meet up with a bunch of people right it for it an does online game give you good time though to go into the dog zone cuz that's the perfect that's time right. for it yeah but that was kind of the whole reason why I never picked it up. But, you know, for $3, it's like, all right, you know, it's it, it's worth checking out. And I have not come across that same issue. Um, yeah, I, I like... only play this solo, and I've never had a Yeah. There's, there are a couple missions that, that are a little spicy, but they're not, yeah. not impossible. The last – I find that a lot of times – I've only died twice in the game, and I've been finding that a lot of times the reason why I'm dying is because when I hit A to get behind cover – my character decides what cover at that point in time it's going to, and it's not necessarily the cover I need it to be. Sure. Um, or like in the last one, I am trying to jump and dodge around so that I stop getting shot with a machine mm-hmm. gun. And there's like no cover around all of a sudden whatsoever that I can stick to. And yeah. then I die. So yeah. that kind of sucks, but whatever. I mean, I had dumb moments where I meant to, there was a boss fight that I was getting ready to go into and I was on the second level so I would be able to throw grenades and shoot down on everybody. Mm -hmm. So I went to take cover up against the railing so I can do my little pulse thing so I can see where everyone's at and how many of them there are and then Mm -hmm. I can throw my uh, droid up so I can start shooting people. Nope, game decided that I was going to jump over that railing and land (laughs) right in the middle of everybody. Yep. So that was a lot of panicking. Yeah. Yep. Um, But, and the only... Besides sometimes the cover mechanic, the only other issue I have with this game are its loot. Mm. Its loot is kind of garbage so far for me. I don't know if you guys have had any. <laughs> Very early days, it's really weird. Yeah. 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 That improves as I... you go on. Um, the most annoying aspect for that for me was like, I am an LMG and a assault rifle guy. My wife mm-hmm. is a DMR and an SMG um, girl. And. We would always run into that thing where we, luckily we played together because she would never get a DMR drop and I would never get an LMG drop, but we'd flip Mm -hmm. that and I would always get what she prefers and vice versa. So that allowed us to be like, I hate these type of weapons. I don't feel comfortable using them. So I'm just going to drop this here. She can pick it up and then she can drop her. Yeah. Trade them. Yep. Yeah. So right now I'm using, what is it? An M1A Classic. Mm-hmm. Which is basically, if you think back to World War II, what the Marines would always use in Call of Duty and all that fun stuff. Mm-hmm. It is a single shot, basically a DRM. I have no mods for it, and it has like 935 damage. Mm-hmm. And it's like one or two shots to an enemy, and it's dead. Nice. This is a level four weapon, and I am almost level nine now, and I have not found anything that even comes close to competing what, what class is it? Is it a marksman rifle? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, and that's the thing is like I've like I have assault guns that I've gotten. They're all garbage. They shoot everywhere. So you end up happening to just do single shots anyway, which is why I just went with this because it was like there's no point in going into burst because you're shooting half the building while the guy's standing in front of you. Yeah. Yep. It, pretty soon you'll start, you'll unlock the option to do side missions and side missions will unlock weapon mods. Those will allow you to tune your weapons a lot more where it's like, yep. all right, I want more stability maybe at the cost of some of my rounds in my magazine or something like yep. that. So you can kind of fine tune some weapons pretty quickly. Yeah. But the crap thing is that I did get an LMG, an M60 Echo mm-hmm. from this last boss that I had fought. And it is just total garbage compared to this level four rifle that yeah. I'm still using because it only does, I think it only does like 264 damage or something. And it's like, mm-hmm. okay, yeah, it can put down a lot of bullets down range. I think it was like 100 compared to my, like, 7 or whatever for the other yeah. one. Yeah. The thing is, though, is that the hit field on that is so wide Yeah. that it doesn't matter. Yeah, it's great that I'm putting 200 bullets down range in a minute and I'm suppressing everybody, but it doesn't do me any good if I'm only suppressing people with the stupid thing. <laughs> yeah. I mean, for so, me, like, stuff like that, like, that's 
that's also like character like class specification and stuff like that too like yeah. i went mm-hmm. deep into the lmg spec where the longer you hold the trigger the tighter that feel gets like the, yeah. the reticle like shrinks and really yeah. deep into that it's like literally like five rounds into your 100 round magazine and it's like a normal crosshair all of a sudden it's like a laser and you're just like <laughs> yeah that's that's why i went with it like end game i just changed yeah. everything to the to the lmg because i was like well, I'm over there with the DMR doing the good stuff. I'll just sit here and do the do the medium stuff and the keeping them behind cover stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like you're you're getting the the normal division two experience, where it's like I have my one gun I really like, and I won't find another one for probably another couple levels. Uh-huh. That's what it feels like, which yeah. is weird. But I'm getting like all these other drops for like my backpack is okay, and you know yeah. my body armor and all that stuff. Everything else is fine. It's just. The weapons I don't get anything for. I usually run around with my uh, with that rifle and then a shotgun of some sort. Right now I have a hunting shotgun. It's a double yeah. barrel. That's and it. Pretty soon you'll rescue the lady at the White House that will let you craft weapons. So it's yep, like I already got her. now I I you already got her. Yeah. Okay. So pretty soon you, if you don't have the option to to make marksman rifles you will and then you can say i love this archetype just make me a new one that's at my level gear level whatever yeah. so you can kind mm-hmm. of pump your materials into that yeah that's all i'm really waiting on is just yeah doing more because i've done a bunch of the side quests i think i'm ready to move on to the next main mission because i've got the the theater god what are they settlement called? yeah i've got yeah. the theater settlement pretty much what am I on? Like the next set of projects. Like there was one tier of projects that it had you do. I did all those and now it has me on the next tier mm-hmm. projects to do. So I've just been kind of running around doing stuff for them. And it's yeah. been fun. Yeah. The last the last game I did try to jump in with people. The group decided that they were just going to shoot me. Oh, interesting. And I killed them all. Uh, as oh, you do. Okay. So <laughs> I don't know what that was. I- like... I literally jo- dropped into the game. The guy just aimed his gun at me, and I thought he was just checking me out until he shot me. Hmm. So I just put two shells into his head. He was down. Two other guys came around the corner on his team, took them down, and I'm like, what is going on? This that's, is stupid. That's really weird. I've never run into uh, that. Yeah, huh. I don't know. Weird. But then I left that match, so whatever. Yeah. Um, The next game that I've been playing, kind of, in my last game is kingdom come deliverance mm. oh tell me about this, this is this is free on epic games right now um until next week not this coming week but i think it's the following week after that it's then you have to pay for it again um to tell you about the game within the first 10 minutes of starting the game i had already gotten killed by a drunk in a bar fight Mm-hmm. Well, not even a bar fight. It was just a drunk who was mad. I was supposed to go get payment because you play as the son of a blacksmith. Your dad wants you to go to this guy to get payment for stuff that he made for him in the past. You go to get payment and the guy gets real pissy with you and you have the option of either fight him or try to persuade him. And I chose fight just to give it a shot because I didn't figure there was going to be much persuading right now because the guy was drunk and he was mm-hmm. mad. And apparently the guy is really good at fighting, and at, at least with keyboard and mouse, eh, controls aren't that great. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Or or my guy just sucks this early in the game, because I have been told that this is basically a hardcore Skyrim. Yes. So, and like, I can't even save when I want to. If you want to save in this game, you have to save and quit. Or else you have to start doing like this alchemy stuff where you make what do they call it? They call it like a uh, an item that you have to make, and it's like a save scone or something. Oh, and you geez. have to make this item so that you can save anytime you want. Which I'm gonna look into mods to fix that because I'm on PC, so yeah. <laughs> and I'm an adult, and I don't have time to just not save. Yeah. Um. But yeah, it it looks interesting. It runs fine on my computer. Um. The fighting just feels weird. And like I said, I don't know if that's just the game's mechanics, like how it's supposed to be. But fighting that drunk was a real pain, and I hated it. And then I stopped playing for a little bit. so Because I tried it out earlier today just to see because it finished downloading. And that's about as far as I got. Yeah. (laughs) 
I will look into it more. I know that there is apparently a part where the village that I am in gets taken over and you die a lot trying to get away. But once you finally get past that part, that's when the game opens up. Mm. But I know everyone complains about the village being over overran quite a bit because that's all I see online for people who just started playing it. Right. Is you? I guess you have to do this in a very certain way or else you're just dead. Okay. Hmm. So, <laughs> yeah. I'll find out what that certain way is some other time. So that is all that I've been playing. What about you, Boston? Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. I'm not ready. Um, I finished the third character in Saga Scarlet Grace Ambitions. Uh, so I finished the my Leonard playthrough by the skin of my teeth. I beat that boss. Um, so hopped into... The final character, Balmaint, ba- Balmont, I don't, he, it, his name should be Belmont because he really just looks like a, a Symphony of the Night character. It's pretty great. Um, I'm at the end of his playthrough. Uh, his, his, his story has been super short, uh, but it was actually really interesting because it's broken into, I think it's like seven different chapters, and each chapter is hyper-focused on one task you're doing in one area of the world and you kind of can't go anywhere else so it's like uh this dude we're hunting has shown up up here let's go do the thing up there we'll go fight him we'll take care of him and then uh you know kind of wrap up that storyline and then start the next one um i am now uh at the final boss for him and it you find the same final boss for every character, which is fine. Um, but th- the storyline that has led up to the final boss for this playthrough has given you a little bit more information about the final boss, which is is pretty great. Um, so still enjoying it. Still kind of ready to be done with it. Hoping to wrap it up this week and kind of put a bow on this game that I have been enjoying that I can Almost recommend to nearly nobody. Me. Yeah, you're almost as bad as me. I, I got one achievement left. I can play that seventy yeah. hours again. Just uh, to get that one I'd, achievement. I'd love to get the the platinum in this game because I love it so much, and I just I will not go through that horrific grind. To <laughs> most of the trophies aren't that bad. Like there's one trophy where it's like this optional thing that seems like most people miss, where um, you can craft and trade. Uh goods and materials between different towns um and it's kind of neat because you're taking this stuff you're taking straw to make this thing to go make this thing to and you're you're sort of 15 or 20 trading things deep it's like the zelda the zelda yeah very much all of those games yeah where it's like i caught some fish with a net and i traded those fish to get some mollusks and those got turned into buttons and they got turned into this stuff. Um, the one achievement that's the, that's really bad is you have to trade every single one of those items in one playthrough. So basically you're just going to do that for an entire playthrough. Um, that's not super bad because you can, there's someone probably has a spreadsheet out there and it's like, Oh, I did that. Check that one off. Um, the one that would be really bad is to basically learn and use every tech, which is a character skill. Uh, that's a lot. Like, that's dozens and dozens of them. And I don't want to do that because I'm enjoying this game and I kind of don't want to uh, burn myself out on it. Oh, you don't want to run into the whole Star Ocean thing where 90% of the trophies <laughs> associated with them are based on just luck? Yep. <laughs> I had like 200 hours of just luck. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, thanks. Um, I, uh, Glass Masquerade 2 Illusions came out this week. Um, if anyone doesn't remember me, uh, really enjoying the first Glass Masquerade, it is a puzzle game, uh, like a put puzzle pieces together game, uh, where you're building, uh, the first one was like you're building stained glass clocks. And you're building one for each country uh, around the world. Um, 
we talked a lot this week about This is the Police 2, where yeah. This is the Police 1 was a hyper-focused game. We're going to do this one thing, and we're going to do it super well. And This is the Police 2 having grand ambitions that maybe aren't necessary. Glass Mask Grade 2 is similar, where... Before, it was just, here's a bunch of icons on a world map. You can kind of know what you're doing. This one is, here's 35 icons on this giant confusing map. And sometimes you finish a puzzle and you get a key. I don't know what those are for. And now every puzzle has multiple difficulties. So you're kind of finishing up. And it's like, I just, just give me a menu of 35 puzzles. Here are the difficulties. Here's what you've done. I like that there are more difficult options for puzzles where it seems like it's you know if you clear out a puzzle it has 35 pieces you do it on hard as 75 you know stuff like yeah. that um any fractals uh not that i've seen i mean that that's we're chasing the dragon on that one pretty oh, much every oh. puzzle game but give it time he's only unlocked hard not very hard God, yeah i'd love to have another i just i just need to make my own puzzle game i just need to make puzzle arcade 2 you know but it's has a different yeah, name. The, the roguelike of puzzle games. Oh, God, don't even get me started, man. <laughs> um, but so far, it seems like it's the... This is going to be a really weird uh, quality of life improvement. You moving the pieces around is faster, which sounds like one of those things that's kind of dumb, but... It was a little too slow in the first one where it's like, I just have to get all the way to the other side. No, that doesn't go. I got to go all the way back. It's just a snappier game overall, and I, I really appreciate it. So it's uh, I bought it on – it's available on pretty much everything. Uh, if you're a PS Plus member, it's like $9.50. If not, it's like $12. So it's it's on sale for the first week or so. Um, it. It seems good. It seems like a sequel to the first one. And the first one was really great. So sure. um I'm I'm hoping I'm hoping this one is good. Um but I'm only like two or three puzzles in out of thirty five with multiple difficulties. And something with keys. I don't know. Uh but the last game I played, Division Two, uh I so <laughs> I had heard about the as moon said the warlords of new york it's like we're going back to new york and it's like dope cool that that sounds really great and as part of the announcement they're like hey a brand new episode is available in division two and i was like that's great i should check out episode three it's like okay cool i have a lot of catching up to do because i didn't play the first two yep. um i played virtually none of this game for like the last nine months um, so I wanted to get in, sort of check out what the changes are. The new loot system is coming on the March 3rd patch, so I'm not really going crazy with, like, chasing loot or anything. Mostly, like, hey, there are now six, um, specializations, so let's go unlock all those. And, hey, I've got a flamethrower, and, hey, I've got a rocket launcher and a grenade launcher and stuff now. Um, um, I, what else did I do? Oh, some of the um, classified missions, they're, from what I understand, they're exclusive to the year one pass holders. Um, those are pretty fun, kind of like 20, 30 minute missions. Um, but most importantly, for longtime listeners of the show, yep, I finally have the, the hamburger backpack trophy. It's It's finally in the game. I finally have it. I have a hamburger hanging off of my backpack. So Which was weird because when you posted the picture in Discord, all I could really see was your character's butt. But, and yeah. I was like, that's an yeah. odd thing to it's, post. It's a really <laughs> weird camera angle for like, hey, I want to look at my backpack trophies. It's like, just get rid of the character model. Just have like a floating backpack with the, the thing on it. So well, I have finally have retired. When you can have all that butt. Well, right. yeah, because I'm I'm looking at the picture right now, and it's square it's, it's in a between lot the butt. cheeks. Yeah, yeah, and I'm like, what? Yeah. Why is he posting this? And then it's like a panda. What is that? A panda cheeseburger? Uh, it's a, like a cheeseburger with eyes on it for some reason. Um, it looks like it's a panda. Like the top part of the bun looks like a panda. It yeah. looks like a, a Persona Four Teddy. Oh, Teddy. Yeah. <laughs> 
So I finally uh, um, retired my skeleton with the dang little legs. Um, now I'm a full-time hamburger man. I'm sorry, um, I'm but, a space shuttle for life, dangly. Yeah, I don't remember if I have the space shuttle. I gotta, I gotta double check. Um, but man, Division Two is still really great. It is still a really great game to play. I'm, I've. I forgot that when I left off at that game, I had. What are we laughing at? Jim, Jimbo Jangos, would you oh. say that's a medium rare item? <laughs> oh, Jimbo. That's really good. That's really good. Um, I forgot that when I left off in that game, I had finished the story. And then it dumped me in the game and was like, all right, world tier one, let's go. And I had forgotten that is, that's the point I was at. So now, like, I'm going back through the story missions and clearing those out so I can clear out stuff to get to the next world tier. And I have forgotten all of those missions. So it's kind of fun to now go back through the game for the first time again. Yeah. Um, and, man, the Vision 2 is just, it's so much fun to play. And like you were saying, Nymp, like, I don't, I don't often play these games with other people and it's now fun to go back through these missions and they're way more difficult now because after the Black Tusk invades, they're a lot of their enemy types are just stupid hard. Um, and I like going through these missions by myself with my tools and just kind of coming out against all odds being like, yeah, I, I did this solo and man, that was tough. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I also yeah. I also like too how the items that you can unlock to help yourself your gear basically it mm -hmm. tells you right there hey this is more useful solo than it is in yes. co-op or multiplayer kind of thing so that's yep. why I stuck with the pulse and the droid that I have because those had really high solo ratings on them yeah so. I stick with turret and drone um, so I've got the drone healing me and the turret kind of helping me spot and mop up guys um, that works pretty well. But um yeah I'm I'm mostly like trying to get my sea legs back because I'm I'm really interested in the Warlords of New York stuff especially with the loot 2.0 kind of happening at the same time. Um I think both of those are are pretty interesting. Um and I I I forgot how much I liked playing Division 2 and how much fun that game is. And now I own it on everything because it was only $6 to get it on two more platforms, or why not? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> if only they would do um, cross-save, which yep. I know the community has asked for for a while, and they said, e we would like that to do that too, but whoops, we made a mistake when we developed it. So yeah. we've got to work cross on Cross-save and cross-play. Like, yeah. yeah. Honestly, I would be surprised if they're not industry standards next year. Yeah, I mean, they, uh, they're they really the expectation now where it's like, okay, cool, you're on everything. So, like, cross-save, cross-play, what about that stuff? And when yeah. they say no, it's sort of like, hmm, I get it, but, like, need to want to want to want to get on that. I'm sorry, if Rocket um, League can do it before they go bull by Epic, then everybody yeah. can do it. And it's just that frustrating thing because, like, I fired it up on my PC to see how it looks. Spoiler alert, really good. Um, and, like... I'm in the village at the start, and I'm storming the the White House at the beginning. It's like, eh, yeah, cool, but I've already put like forty hours into the story in this. I don't want to do that again to like regear my character. So that that's just yep. a real a real bummer for that. But don't let that stop you from buying the Division Two for three dollars. Like I don't yep. it, even like I said on uh, on on Twitter and Discord, even if you just play the story and like when it rolls over to world tier one, you stop, that's still like 40 hours worth of gameplay, like really mm -hmm. solid cover based shooting gameplay for three bucks. So yeah. go get it, go do it. Uh, but that's all I'm playing this week. So let's take a break.
Let's talk releases for the week of February 17th, 2020. The Bayonetta and Vanquish 10th Anniversary Bundle comes out for PS4 and Xbox One. <sighs> they are also available digitally separately. Um, so if you're ah. incorrect and you don't like both of those games, um, you can just buy them separately digitally. Oh. Or you can get the cool Steelbook. Uh, that's 40 bucks. Uh, it comes with both some. to forget about this in about four seconds flat, so I apologize. I'm going to text a friend of the show, T-Bomb Rocks, in the middle of the show to let him know that he can get Bayonetta separately. Because <sighs> he spent some time complaining about this to me the other day. <sighs> T-Bomb. Man, I, I have bought Bayonetta for my wife on two different consoles, and she still has yet to beat it. But she now it's game. remastered. Well, I know. She <laughs> loves the game, because I bought her yeah. the second one, too. And... I don't. I brought this up to her too. I was like, I don't know what it is about you and female roles and stripper poles, but because she played, uh, <laughs> what was it, Rain on the Xbox, the female vampire oh, game. She, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Blood Rain. Blood, Blood Rain, Rain. That's what yeah. it was called. Yeah. Oh, boy, she really loved that, that game. game too. So, <laughs> jeez. <laughs> Man. Boy. Uh, up next, Kingdom Hearts <laughs> HD 2.8 Final Chapter Prologue comes out on Xbox One. So if you're looking. <laughs> Is that the this, first game and the second game, or just the second game? Hey, man, I don't know anymore, dude. <laughs> it's just, just the games in between the two. Yeah, it's just they just they also just announced what was it? Uh, Kingdom Hearts: The Complete Package on PS4, yeah. where it's like for sixty bucks you get literally everything, including Kingdom Hearts three. I don't know. Go play them. They're dumb. They're great. You can now just get all of them. I just got a thank you text. There you go. Play Vanquish. <laughs> T-bomb, come on! He he beat it. He beat it less than a year ago. That's why he doesn't want to buy it again. But you could play it again. Uh, Kingdom uh, Devil May Cry Three Special Edition comes out on Switch. Um, There's some new stuff they added to this, and I think they added co-op to this as well. So, like this this sounds like a pretty significantly upgraded version of this. And last but not least, Double Dragon and Kunio Kun Retro Brawler Bundle comes out on Switch, PS4, PC, and Xbox One. Uh, this is a, a this is a pretty crazy collection. So basically, combines the Double Dragon series and the um, oh god, what are those games called? Um, oh, the the ones where like you punch people in the stomach and they go barf Streets on the NES. Rage. No, the other ones. I'll look them up. Double um, Dragon. No, that's the that's the, the other game one. we're talking about. Now. Yeah. Um, the they're combining basically all of those games together and um, translating. It's like eleven or fourteen of them for the very first time. Wait, are they? When um, you say combining them together, are you talking about like? Multiple games in one package, or are we talking yes. like a Smash style brawler game? Which <laughs> I would really like. No, I mean, I mean, there's like 18 games in there, so maybe not. Jimbo Jangles says in chat correctly, River City Ransom. Okay, uh, so it's the, the game I never like, played. Yeah, it's like the River City Ransom, like dodgeball school set of games. There's a whole bunch of those games, and there's a couple other games in there too. So um, that's a that's a pretty cool release. There's that's. At the very least, for like archival purposes, because I'm sure there's a bunch of stinkers in that collection. We put that many games together, it's like, well, here are the two or three great ones they, and 15 they other put ones. The Golden X collection out on 360, and there's only one gold, good Golden X game. It's true. It's true. It's the first it's one, by the way, everybody. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right, let's move on to news stories. Big rumor this uh, this week is uh, dealing with Sony. And their struggles with both price point and production costs of the PS5. Uh, Bloomberg is reporting here that um, the PS5 currently costs four hundred and fifty dollars per unit uh, for Sony to manufacture, and this is interesting because there's like two or three factors that are all working against Sony. That some of the is in their power and some of it isn't. So one of the big uh, problems that they're having is issues procuring both the DRAM and the NAND flash memory, which phone manufacturers are getting ready to release their fifth generation of smartphones. So they're all using the similar chip technology to, to 
manufacture stuff on their end mm-hmm. while Sony is trying to use that to manufacture chip technology in the PS5 especially for for RAM and stuff like that um, it's um it's very similar to the whole bitcoin craze um and what yeah the with graphics card GPUs prices. yeah exactly yeah. Um, so there's just there's only so much that can be made at once, and smartphones are are trying to have a piece of that pie as well. Um, the other part of it is uh, Sony's allegedly putting this should come in no surprise, and it's exactly what Sony should be doing, putting a brand new uh, expensive cooling system in the PS5, which everybody say at the same time, hallelujah. Um, yeah. vapor cooling. About to, um, nope, they can't do that because Microsoft patented that. I uh, yeah, I know. Mist cooling. <laughs> um, dank cooling. Thank you very much. That's right. Brought to you by Baja Blast. Um, so uh, it's it's interesting because they're they're doing the things that a next generation console should have. They're revamping their cooling system. They're putting an SSD in there. They're putting more RAM in there. They're putting better. GPU and CPU chips in there, but phones also need that same same technology. Mm-hmm. Not saying I'm sure some people would be out there being like, "Oh, the PS5 is so weak, it's gonna be like a phone." That's not that's not how it works. Go investigate. But you know they're they're fighting for these same resources, and the really interesting part is that Bloomberg is reporting that Sony is really stepping back a little bit and taking a wait and see approach to pricing and waiting for Microsoft to get out there and be like, our new console is this much. And then they, Sony they do that will see how much. They, every well, I, I think they do that. Has there ever they been always, a year where Sony have gone first for announcing a price? Right. But I think it's especially difficult now because they, they can't put this console out for $450 because they're not making any money. So you have to assume the minimum isn't even enough because uh, yeah, I think the minimum is 500, but I think yeah, that's I, not enough for early I, adopter sales. No, I I think the thing is is like ideally both of these new consoles come out at 500. If yeah. either company has learned anything, it's anything over that and you're pushing your luck with regards right. to And the Series X comes out at 485. Gotcha. Like, <laughs> if you do any more than that then you're looking at questionable like don't get me wrong. If the Series X comes out and it's six hundred, which I'm expecting it to be, yeah, I'll probably still get one. Yeah, if it, the if it comes out at five hundred, great. If it comes out at six hundred, you know that most people are still going to be all over this for oh, it's so expensive. Why is it so expensive? Yeah. And yeah, correctly and incorrectly so because people don't understand the inflation and everything else. Technically, video games should cost us like one hundred and twenty dollars per game at this point. Well, and this is the early adopter tax. You're getting yeah. the brand new consoles the day they're coming out. You're gonna spend a hundred, potentially two hundred more dollars than mm-hmm. you should or than you will in a couple of years. That that's just. The price yeah. of doing business. Well, like the thing that's going to affect Sony here is, is if it's costing them four hundred and fifty to make, that probably doesn't include shipping it out to all the retail locations. It doesn't include right. distribution. It doesn't include marketing. It doesn't include advertising. Yeah, there's just raw manufacturing. Five hundred. <laughs> that's a break even, if not a loss. Yeah. And I have as much as I hate to say this, Microsoft have always been better choking down a, a loss leader for the first couple of years yep. as as expensive as the series x was or as expensive as the x was the uh, the xbox one x mm-hmm. that cost more than that was sold at without a shadow of a doubt that thing cost yep. more than the whatever it was 550 600 it came out as yeah no way they got everything in there for that amount of money but yep. they're fine Fun. they're xbox and I think especially right now, knowing what we know about the two consoles, it if both of them were to come out at $600, I think Microsoft has, as we've talked about for a while, they have sort of the triple threat. They have the backwards compatibility. They have Game Pass. They have Halo Infinite. They have this, this. They they also have the milestone that they've based all of their market on for the past four years. It's going to be the most powerful console that exists. Sure. I mean, that is less of a consideration, I think, for this one because we don't know the full specs for both of them. Yeah. But and I think uh, xCloud is coming soon too, so that might be a potential fourth tentpole for them. 
so you sort of have these three big markers for them of, you know, Xbox Series X isn't going to be a poor investment early on because you have all this stuff. When you look at Sony, they have an SSD. Yep. And that's really the... the uh, We're going to do fast loading like everyone is going to. There are really no other details there because Sony is really waiting and seeing for a lot of stuff or they're just going to wait to like drop a bomb with here's all the details and here's 10 new games and here's our BC plans fingers crossed um so it's it's really hard to get excited about price for the PS5 because we don't know anything yet and I hope we do soon yeah uh because I, at the, I'm going to be buying both of them. Please launch at five hundred dollars, please. Um, I, I will buy the both of them for six hundred dollars, but anything more than that, and I gotta be choosy here. Um, but like, I want, I want to know the details about both of these consoles, and and I, I want to start getting excited about them because they're coming in you a couple too? of months. Yeah, like they're they're gonna be launching in a couple of months, and with Sony not being an E three, I can't rely on that being their full announcement point. Because in in years past, it would have been like, all right, I I can wait until June. Like June's gonna be the time they lay everything on the table and say it's coming in four months. It's coming in five months, but um, that's not a that's not a guarantee anymore. So interesting. And of course, Sony uh, declined to comment, as they always do, as every company yeah. always does. So, yeah. Uh, last news story here: Bioware announces a substantial reinvention for Anthem. Uh, we talked about this a couple weeks ago, where Jason Schreier, Schreier, however, Jason, Blood, Sweat, and Pixels, Jason, uh, uh, was sort of repeating, reporting on his Anthem 2.0, Anthem Next uh, thing, and uh, General Manager Casey uh, Hudson. Wrote a blog post this week, uh, basically announcing that um, sort of uh, sounds like they're taking Anthem back to the drawing board, and they're they're sort of at this point stopping seasonal updates uh, for Anthem. They say they're they're gonna keep doing in-game events, story freshes. The whole game is still gonna be available, so it's not like yeah, we'll see you in six months. Um, but they're <laughs> This is this is a really great quote. Hudson said that Bioware will be, quote, doing something we'd like to have done more of the first time around, giving a focus team the time to test and iterate, focusing on gameplay first, end quote. Translation, EA made us do it. <laughs> Ouch. Yeah, like yeah. EA pushed this out the door. We don't want it. We didn't want to do that, and we don't want to do it this time. Um, so I think I am really excited to see what anthem 2.0 is going to be because i think if bioware can take the time and if they can take all this feedback and they can have a lot of time to kind of sit there and do some foundation work to anthem i think they can come out with a really great game and i'm very happy excuse me i felt choked up um i'm very happy to see them not giving up on it because i think if we would have seen that blog post where it's like hey, we tried like we tried with anthem and we just never got there and we're moving on to the next project everyone would have been like yeah i get it like you mm. you gave it a shot circumstances were what they were and it never came together but it's nice to see them say like yeah we're we're buckling down we're focusing we're going dark for a little bit and we're kind of we're gonna a realm reborn this thing so I was Get ready. Say, I'm curious if this is the um, Final Fantasy 14. Is it 14? Yes, 14. Yeah, 14. Ask that same question. Um, yeah. If it's the, well, they have two MMOs running at the same time that have Final yeah. Fantasy in them. So <laughs> I'm curious if it's the 14 slash the Ubisoft effect, because yep. you tell me <clears throat> that when Siege came out, that you think that that thing is going to be <laughs> as alive and healthy as it is right. these days. And it, you thought it would have gone the way of For Honor. Way. Yeah, hey <laughs> which is still alive and still does really big numbers, dude. Somehow, yeah. well, and it's it's the same thing with No Man's Sky, where it's like we put this out, it's great. E whoops, okay. Well, I we are uh, we gotta we gotta work on this, and then they launched No Man's Sky next, and it was sort of like yeah, everyone's we we gave it a 
a second a breath of life mm-hmm. um so i think i think most people i i think all three of us included can look at anthem and say like yeah you you got some ideas here you you i can see where this could go if you if you could flesh this out and you could you could fix this up and i i hope they get there mm-hmm. well that's kind of what i said when i first picked up the game for 20 bucks was there's a lot of good ideas here that just were not properly executed or, yep. or they're they just thin. weren't filled out yeah yep. <clears throat> yeah but i'm glad that they're doing this because this this to me would have left a really bad mark on them if they just like nah we put it out here you go and now we have dragon age coming out Mm. right good luck (laughs) no yeah exactly it's like why would i buy that game if you just crapped out this one game that you said was supposed to be a triple a game and it's not right we'll we'll do better next time don't worry exactly yeah pre-order dragon age now (laughs) but honestly even if they would have said like um that's it like we're calling it on anthem this is it we're just going to keep one server shard alive i would much rather have that where you got some good in the background that obviously had issues being developed on i'd rather have that than a wwe 2k20 situation oh god where it's like please pull the plug literally (laughs) on fire every minute that that game is turned on it's like january 1st whoops it stopped working (laughs) yeah the game with the 2020 in the title <laughs> didn't work in the year 2020. So dumb. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. And, and uh, you know, it, it is, this, I feel like, is the expectation that they keep the server up and running. But it's nice that they're still doing seasonal events. They're still doing vendor refreshes. They're still doing stuff. So it's not just like, hey, we're going to make the next Anthem thing. And it's kind of frozen in time until then. You know, they're... If you're a hardcore Anthem player, there's still probably some reasons for you to to continue being engaged. So I think that's great. Good on Bioware. You know, Godspeed. Good luck. Uh, let's move on to questions here. T-Bomb Rocks in Discord says, With Wonderful 101 getting a remaster and going multi-platform, I've been wondering, what game is stuck on a past-gen platform would you like to see get a similar treatment to Wonderful 101? Asura's Wrath. Mm, that's good. I'll beat you. Parasite yes. Eve. Yeah. Parasite Eve right. 1 and 2. Put them out. 1 and 2. The only, the only two that came out. Just put them, put them on a disc. Put them on Switch. Two of two. All 100% of them. I, I would like to see Asura's Wrath with all the DLC together. 1080, 60. Like, just put the complete package in so no one has to complain about, oh, like, I had to buy the ending. Boo. What? It's like $2 right now, anyway. But, like, I'd like to see that come to more platforms and be available to more people so I can uh, play the game for the first time. But you have to remember, too, that was right in the middle of companies hiding real endings 100 percent that everyone was fighting against which now yep. everyone seems fine with but well and like you know, that, that was during the like day of it the ea like what were the passes they were project $10. online passes yes it was... yeah pro- yes project ten dollar and just like yeah. I, I that was like <clears throat> it, the street fighter tie-in i think a lot of people were like that's that's fine that's fun that's kind of cool and then it's like next chapter, the last couple chapters are ten bucks, fifteen bucks, whatever. And I just Assassin's Creed did it in the middle of the game, the middle oh, of God. the game. Yes, it AC two. two. Yeah, yeah. I think it was two that had two sequences, fourteen and fifteen are missing from the middle of the game. That was DLC. <laughs> you like skipped from sequence thirteen to sequence sixteen, and they're just like, all right, well that was fun. Let's keep on going. It's like, uh, hmm. What just happened? I'm sorry. What, yeah, because that was these sequences are corrupted. <laughs> yeah, that was something where I was like, "Oh, that's jerks. just part of the story." Then found out, "Oh no, mm-hmm. you have to buy these." I'm like, ah, "I got my story." Yep. Yeah, I well, assumed that, that it was literally just part of the story. That it was like, "Oh, yep. these are broken." You know, it, it happens. It's the animus, whatever. And it's like, nope, that's paid content, fools. S- sad part was yeah. those sequences were really good. I know. I bought that DLC and it was like really the, good. The war as well, and like there was a whole bunch of explosions yep. and stuff in one of them. Super cool. Yeah. yeah. Um, <clears throat> T-Bomb also asks what are some of your favorite game studios that have shut down for me it's Pandemic and Visceral Games Moon you can say it with me Bullfrog 
Yep, the Bullfrog. <laughs> um, Blair, um, I think, was the um, studio that became Disney Interactive. Both of those were amazing. Disney Interactive yep. responsible for a bunch of racing games and Split Second. Yeah, yep. Uh, mine would be an old school one called Working Designs, which mostly oh. got pulled up by Atlas. Boy, but... Working Designs, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> oh, I've got a great one for you. Studio Liverpool. Name what they made. Yeah. Shut up, Boston. There you don't go. say it. Nymph, what did they make? <laughs> I don't know. Boston. Off the top of my head. Uh, they were um, Wipeout. Yep. And Cynosis. Oh, okay. <laughs> yep. Uh, split second, Black Rock <laughs> Studio. There we go. Yeah, they like got I think, I think absorbed they into Disney Interactive. Disney Interactive, and then Disney Interactive yeah. made the ATV game, and then they shut down. Um, yeah, now all those peeps are off doing something else. They're all working with Ghost or Criterion, apparently. <laughs> yeah, who's now making Need for Speed again? Yeah, so just <laughs> passing from one hand to the other, like here's your five bucks. Oh, round here's round your five speed bucks. Rate of bush. Round and That's round right. Circles. Um. What else? I mean, I feel like other than Bullfrog, nearly everything that EA has absorbed and destroyed is is sort of easy pickings. The Command um, and Conquer devs. Um, yeah. I mean, yeah, just Westwood, yeah, uh, we Janes, Maxis. Like, they're just there's just a trail of corpses behind them that <laughs> also is just a bummer. Dude, um, Red Alert 2. Like, I will say this until 2016, Red Alert 2 had the best opening soundtrack of all time. Red Alert 2 is a really great game. And then Doom came out in 2016. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm going to. Here's a controversial one 38 Studios. Kingdoms yep. of Amalur. No, they, there uh, th- was like, yeah. severe potential in that game, in that studio. And Kingdoms of Amalur was a really great game. Like, let's separate Kurt Schilling. And all of his misdeeds completely. There's such a cool idea, and like they really s- started to try and build this thing that just went wrong. <laughs> like it just. Speaking of a trail of cultures, though, um, Walking Dead developer Telltale. Oh Jesus! Yeah, the absolute mismanagement personified. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and don't get me wrong. I'm glad that they're back in some form, form or another, and I hope it's yeah, the they're shambling devs, corpse. And I will wait and see what everything gets said on that. Yeah, but I played the final season of The Walking Dead, and there was some very serious potential in that game that you can see yeah. them just rushing it faster and faster and faster yeah. as you get close to the end, and it's like. Really? Yeah. I, you know, I was just thinking, like, man, when the first Darksiders came out, like, I was prepared for that game to come out and be like, man, if only they could make more games. This studio just had some promise, and they'd put out some great stuff. Uh-huh. Same with um, Battle Airship Syndicate, the um, Battle Chasers Night War guys. Um, they just put out uh, Darksiders Genesis, and they're working with someone else really big. It's like, all right, yeah, you come on. If you they're made it. With, they're working with somebody really big, and you don't know who it is. It's probably THQ Nordic at this point. <laughs> no, I mean at this point, it's probably Tencent. True. Yeah. Or as it's um, known to the Western world, THQ Nordic. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Um, I can't think of any other. I feel like we're probably missing like a really big one, but I. Well, we named a lot of the big hitters. Yeah. I'm trying to think of anybody yeah. recently. Uh, I mean, uh, Telltale was the most recent heartbreak. I feel like there haven't been a lot of really big ones lately that have been like that. Yeah, my scope is so narrow that if it's not a JRPG, chances are I don't care. So yeah, <laughs> and Square Enix sort of saved each other when they they merged. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I wish they would put out more of their older games, but mm-hmm. you know, maybe one day. Yeah, Square's like older game, Final Fantasy VII remake like that, and it's like no older, and they're like Final Fantasy VII for like the original one. Yeah, yeah. Um, Are you guys uh, talking about Crisis Core? What? Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, speak, speaking of um, Square Enix, though, um, if you haven't go watch the Hitman documentary series, no clipped it on it because there's oh, okay. a specific episode about IO splitting it apart from Square Enix. Interesting and the incredibly respectful process that Square did 
Square included nice. IO in every single conversation with other studios wanting to buy the, the studio. That's cool. Like, it's really interesting because they're like, yo, they didn't have to include us. Like, yeah, like they could have just said, like, here, see, like, here's the door. Mm-hmm, we put yeah. your stuff in boxes. See ya. Speaking of no clip, I just watched the, um, the Gish documentary. It was what, 40, so 35, 40 minutes. Really great. Really great. And I, good does I guess, it look, it looks so good. It looks, it looks really great. And I, I guess I never realized how influential Gish was and is until mm-hmm. I watched that. And I was like, yeah, you know what? That, that is in a, a very, important game and no one has done it except for when Sto- Sony stole it to make Loco Roco which yeah. Ed jokes about <laughs> it's like really great. it makes me laugh because it's the most I think they actually say in that documentary it's the most important indie game that nobody's ever played yeah and a special edition available from limited run games right now which mm-hmm. I've been side eyeing and maybe thinking about buying uh, Jimbo Jangles sends an email says hey TVGP crew Jimbo Jangles here my question to the crew this week when was your last stand up and cheer moment in gaming was it beating a near impossible boss getting that super ultra rare achievement or item maybe it was finally getting a game you're waiting for what was your last or most memorable gaming moment have a great show Jimbo uh, I saw this in the show notes earlier mm-hmm. and made a couple of notes Spoilers. here because <laughs> uh, I had to go and check what specific things for this. I'm going to go with my mm. number one pick whenever a question comes up. You could be asking me about what's the best roguelike that exists between 1922 and 1944, and my answer is always going to be the same thing as it is for every other question, which is the Normandy Reborn moment in Mass Effect 2. Right. <laughs> it always comes up because it's always it's like my a triple answer. joke there. That was a <laughs> literal stand up and yell moment for me. Like, yeah. Like eyes welling up, like jumping up and down. Joker's back. The Normandy's back. The music is perfect. The slow plan, that slow pan. The music, like it's mm-hmm. just ah, so good. Uh, the descenders, the final mm. final jump for the final map on that was literally <laughs> a slog to get to, and it was just like I did it. Thank goodness. I stand up. I think I might have done a good kind of thing, and then yeah. Like, Stood up and got myself a cup of tea to calm down because you know it's, <laughs> You're it's a rogue like and I made it to the end. <laughs> right? <laughs> Who are you, by the way? Uh, <laughs> uh, one of my, my oh god, <clears throat> uh, my final one that I came up with was where did they go? Which is the achievement in Dead by Daylight for having all four people escape through the hatch at once. Which oh yeah was one of those achievements. Which you start the game, you look at it, and you scratch that one off and say never get uh, never happening. Yeah. never getting that one and thanks to community members and my wife like we got it and it was surprisingly easy because we worked well as a team and it's like whoosh, straight oh, down the hatch where did they go yay that's cool uh one of my more recent ones is this season of destiny 2 um there's a a triumph for completing the sundial their their seasonal activity without dying and it's it's needed for the the title for this season as one of those where you like you go through the sundial a couple times and you're like, cool, there's no cover here. The bosses are incredibly difficult and there are enemies everywhere. I will never be able to do this. And like getting through the first wave without dying, you're like, all right. Getting through the second wave, you're like, mm-hmm, uh-huh. This is this could happen. Like getting up to the boss without dying, you're like, ha, ah, ha, ah, my heart rate. Oh no. And like getting through the boss and having that triumph pop, and you're like, oh, thank you, baby Hazes. Like, that's one of those ones, like, yes, I did it. I got it. I did, oh, this is so good. I, I did it. And then I'll have to do the same thing for whatever the next season's activity is. So my only big one like that was with Modern Warfare 4, I think it was, the Mile High Club achievement. Oh, yeah. that's right. Yeah. Um, was the last achievement that I needed for that game. <clears throat> and... <laughs> I'd gotten so mad at the game that my wife, at the time, we were newly married and I was we were living in an apartment, and she had never seen me get so mad at a video game before. Right. And she knew that I had finally gotten the achievement when I was swearing in a different way. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's probably the last, that's actually probably the last time I put any effort into getting trophies or achievements too. I think that one probably broke me. I was like, screw it, never again. <laughs> right. I, yeah. I did the one, so... You, you oh, got me. I've definitely got plenty of um, 
of <clears throat> breath of a breath of um, or a sigh of relief achievements where it's like yeah oh i did it i can oh, stop I'm playing done. this game now binding of isaac uh, yeah. Bind, <laughs> binding of isaac 50 times <laughs> nba live 15 yeah um still only one of 32 people to have completed that game <laughs> on true achievements thank you very in much in the world in the world yes yeah um the easy worshipper achievement in Eternal Sonata, which only took me like four oh, playthroughs to get. <laughs> yeah. Speaking I, of JRPGs. I, I love that game so much. I think my next closest one would probably be, what was it, Ozma from Final Fantasy IX? Yeah, the like globe secret boss. Yeah, God, where it had, a, so it had a save point like halfway through it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, Yasmat from Final Fantasy XII, where it's had like. 50 yeah, million health one. yeah you could save it in the middle of that boss fight and come back <laughs> like yeah it was yeah. like grace bird i did that on ps2 and i was like i'm good i'm not gonna not, never again no thanks yeah that was back when we had time <laughs> yeah i was like in college like i had nothing but time go to class Pfft, whatever yeah. uh don't make sure you five put a question in chat here but i'm gonna save that until next week uh, cause I'm out of time and it's getting super hot in here, which is really weird. Uh, so thank you don't very much it. everyone for listening. Yes. Really? I was going to just say, don't do it as in don't take off all your clothes. Uh, oh yeah. I'm not good. Oh. Don't worry about it. If you're a patron, you can, no, uh, <laughs> $10 a month folks. <laughs> That's right. I ain't cheap. Um, <laughs> Uh, visit us at tvgp.tv everywhere find and follow us on the right hand side of the page speaking of patrons patreon.com slash e1m1 the ones are numbers uh, go ahead and uh, join that five dollars a month is the recommended tier you get all the cool stuff uh, early access behind the scenes uncensored anything above and beyond I appreciate uh, greatly if you uh, join and become a member you get a cool note from me saying thank you uh, personalized note for you that includes your name Pro- probably if you, if you put your name in there um <laughs> mentioned uh we got a brand new game for uh game club we just wrapped up this is the police 2 and the randomizer chose oh god uh stardew valley for go. our was... next problem i say with a heavy wow. heart i mean introducing stardew valley to mm. me and my friends your first That's taste a long is game free. yes <laughs> Yeah, I, well, it's, it's I really... give them the warning. I said to them, get ready to spend 700 hours playing this game, folks. Yeah. It's one of those yeah. ones where we announced it on the show and then had a conversation. It was like, just do your best. Now, I know there's no, like, super proper ending to this. Just don't put in an hour. Like, put some time in. But, you know, just try <laughs> Someone it said it out loud online and then realized mistakes were made. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I I have not played Stardew Valley yet for a very good reason. And we will find out how much time uh, this month is taken up by that game. Heaven help us. This yep. is, is all I can really say. Um, and in a couple of weeks, there'll be a brand new episode of Old Dog New Flicks on the public feed and for patrons. So go sign up for that uh, right now. And I think that's it. So we'll see you all next week. Bye. I'm a fuck call. Bye. <laughs> Bye. All right. Uh, uh, Before we go into titles, by the way, Mile High Club still only has a 22% unlock ratio on TA. That's uh, nice. That's more than I would have thought. I thought that would be like around the 15%. Is that on the original or the the re-release version? version? The 360 version, yeah. Yeah, I think when I got it, it was still like 10 or 11%. Wow. Uh That's crazy. Yeah, it was stupid. All right, Nymph, hit me with your titles. All right, I have very few. Um, however, I would like to say that they're okay. <laughs> As I'm selling for time to reopen the app. Um, the first one I have is I'm Not Ready, Yep, which I'm says a lot about what just happened. Yeah. Of course I need to cough. Illusions. Illusions. Spoiler alert, really good. Normandy Reborn. And then just shout out to Jembo, um, the medium rare comment. <laughs> uh, I think we can write that down as medium rare loot. Uh, medium rare item is the is medium the rare item. Phrasing. Thank you. You're welcome. Guess what's on All right, list uh, too. Okay. <laughs> Maybe I'll just put a check mark next to them. Uh, Moon, what else you got? Uh, drop a list of 50 games. 
Too soon, too soon. Threadbare shirt. The best part of JRPGs. This is a long one, but you might want to cut sections of it depending on how you feel. Uh, kick those skeletons right in the face. I wrote that down too. <laughs> uh, I didn't play anything. Shower bit emoji situation. <laughs> I work Australian hours. Yes. Any fractals? Question mark. Uh, chasing the dragon. The new jangly. All that butt. Medium rare item. <laughs> dank cooling. That's oh, paid that content, dude. That's and right. Trail of corpses. <clears throat> I have. I'm not ready. Uh, I didn't play anything. Kick a skeleton in the face. I work Australian hour. Illusions. And medium rare item. It, for me, it's a it's a tie between two. Australian medium hours. Rare item medium. and. <laughs> yeah, uh, Australian yeah. hours. Both of them are so good. Uh-huh. I mean, don't get me wrong, I like all that butt, but I somehow I don't think that's going to get a show title. Yeah, all that butt. <laughs> all that butt. I would probably vote for medium rare item. Honestly, the fact that it literally had me in them, like... Containing all laughter with, midstream. Within seconds, yeah, within yeah. seconds of it popping up. Mm-hmm. That's a good poshy title. Like, what are you guys laughing at? And then you I, I had like to. the 20 seconds I hadn't looked at chat, Jimbo drops a humor bomb. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm okay with that. Yep. Okay. The problem is I have to come up with something appropriate for a title name. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, I'm just going to make up some dressing goodness. There you go. I almost swore then, forgetting that it's still, it's still recording the show. That's right. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> Nim's been holding it off the whole episode. Yeah, I don't know what my problem is, but there's been a couple times this episode where I've just almost dropped an F-bomb yeah. or... It's how much you love JRPGs, man. I almost I did guess. it like three times yesterday, and this is the police too. Because when you're talking well, about... Well, we were... That, we we're getting heated, not like fighting with each other, but we we're getting heated about, heated about some design choices, and this is the police too. Uh-huh. <laughs> okay, I think I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> Do I even want to know? I hope people can hear. I think she's singing to Bubble Guppies. I th- I think. Yeah. Okay. You guys ready? Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Starting in three, two, one. This is That Video Game Podcast, episode 643 for February 17th, 2020. Medium rare item. With a side of loot boxes. Two all beef patty special sauce, lettuce, cheese, pickles, onions on a sesame seed bun. <laughs> you had to look that up, huh? <laughs> I did, because I forgot halfway through what it was. Yeah. And, and I knew I'm I was English, probably going to swear. That's the American um, Old McDonald's Big Mac thing? song. Yeah. The Big Mac yeah. song. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much, everyone, for watching and joining us. And thank you, Jimbo Jangles, for our title this week. We'll see you next week. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> and we can stop recording. <laughs>